There's never anyone here so early. No, there's not. I'm thrown off. About what? What was the song? Baby, it's 3 a.m. and I must be lonely. Matchbox 20, 3 a.m. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. That was a terrible Matchbox, but. What? <laughs> that was that terrible. Was good that matchbox. was horrible. She said it's cold outside. And you're going to keep doing it. <laughs> what was the song? Like? <laughs> Come on. Okay. Well, uh, boo, boo, boo. She said, baby, it's 3 a.m. and I must be lonely. That's a better matchbox. That's a okay, good sorry. one. What you did at first was not good. So sorry I had to move into it. You're all right. You're okay. You just, you did it as sort of a throwaway thing. Uh, when you actually focus, you do a pretty good matchbox. Oh God, thank you. Yeah. It's matchbox an honor. Like, that's a good group. That's a real good group. I feel <laughs> like we know that. I feel like we appreciate them. But I want to go on record as saying I enjoy I'm not crazy. I'm just a little unwell. Like, oh, what a good song. What'd you get into this weekend? Everything. There's so much to talk about today. Just infinite basketball. Obviously, the Marcus All Jersey retirement was spectacular. You want to know what we won't talk about that I got into this weekend? Went to the farmer's market. The Memphis farmer's market returned. Yes. And it was beautiful on Saturday uh, morning. And we the got market. the best apple pie yes. that I ate last night that made me feel like absolute POS because it was so heavy. We put vanilla ice cream on it as the lady did. instructed. She said, I'm going to give you this pie, but you have to go get plain vanilla bean ice cream. Put it on top. It will just make it be the best thing that you've had. And so we had that. We had steak that we got at the farmer's market, and we had this bol balsamic rice that we got mm. at the farmer's market. Mm. Oh, my God. I'm had, still full. Had a steak from the farmer's market last year. So juicy. It was wonderful. Shout out to Mr. Rhodes of Rhodes Farms and the Farmer's Market. What's up, everybody? It is Monday, April 8th. It is going to be a good day, a total eclipse of a Monday to start the week. Jessica Benson with you from the Grind City Media Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. CJ Hurt behind the glass coming up on today's show. What a weekend. Marcus All's Jersey retirement was a reunion for the books in Memphis. We will take you through all the sights and sounds from FedEx Forum. South Carolina capped off their perfect season with a championship, kept Caitlin Clark from ending her college career with a title. You get the men's championship game tonight between UConn and Purdue. John Calipari is reportedly, allegedly, the new head coach at the University of Arkansas. We will do some Hot Mess Express. The UFL is psychotic, and the Memphis Showboats were baptized by the new rules in a crazy loss here in Memphis this weekend. It'll be a lot of fun. Let's go. Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best. The Leather Tour with Cody Johnson. With special guest Justin Moore. Also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The brand new single Selfish is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. 
Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. Nate Barkatsi, the Be Funny Tour. I mean, Chuck E. Cheese is rough. I don't know if you've been there in a while. They look like they're trying to go to business and they can't. All new material. They filed for bankruptcy and they're still open. They called Blockbuster and they're like, how do you get out? We want out. Nate Barkatsi, Friday, May 31st, FedEx Forum. Tickets available at FedEx Forum Box Office or Ticketmaster.com. Produced by Outback Presents. Nate Barkatsi, the Be Funny Tour. Presents the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt. Live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. What's up, everybody? Hope you had a wonderful weekend. New intro video to start the week. Shout out Courtney Williams for always keeping track of every time CJ jumps up on a desk and runs away. I, I don't think you got shirtless in the new intro video. I mean, are we not counting vacation, CJ, with the leg drink shirtless? Because, like, that shirt, it was on, but, but it, it was, was open. It was all it was open, open right there. It feels a little different. I'll Does miss it. your Halloween costume, um, but I am thrilled with our new intro video. So we have so much to get into today, obviously. CJ, I had to bed last night, and I'm reflecting on such a full weekend, and might it be noted that I headed to bed around 9 o'clock because the main sporting event of the day ended well before the evening, well before it got dark outside, which is exactly how all championship games should be consumed. We will talk about it as we continue on through the show. But I was, I was tucking myself in. I was like, yes, I love going to sleep on Sundays like this when there's so much to discuss. On Monday, we had spe such a special night at FedEx Forum on Saturday with the Mercosol Jersey retirement and the Core 4 reunion and just the reunion period with so many former Grizzlies there. Uh, the women's championship game was awesome, and I can't wait to talk about Don Staley and what it means for Caitlin Clark, who is still yes very very great uh, we get the men's game tonight between Klingon and Edie and all that that means for men's college basketball and then I'm like scrolling on my phone and I see Wrestlemania which admittedly I did not watch live but I did watch the full clip of The Undertaker showing up and even I got excited about Wrestlemania and I was like oh and Cody Rhodes finished the story I don't know what that means but it sounds like an American nightmare if you ask me I, I think the story is the That's bloodline it, right? Yeah, he's the okay, American great. nightmare. I think the story is the bloodline, and they finished the, the bloodline. Oh, there you go. The eclipse is today. So I'm just like about to close my little eyes. I'm just like, mm, this is going to be such a fun day. And then I see this tweet because, you know, you're like on your phone. You're like, one more tweet, one more tweet. And so I just scrolled one last time. And there's this man named Wes with two S's. And that's important because I was convinced that this wasn't a real account, but this man named Wes with two S's had a tweet out there that said Arkansas is close to finalizing on a deal with John Calipari to be its next head coach. I would expect this to happen. And the man's name is Wes Moore. And here's the tweet. And I'm like, surely this isn't real. And I click on Wes Moore and I see, oh no, this man is, is very real. Shout out local news, shout out local sports departments. He's the sports director at a station in Little Rock, Arkansas. And so he seems legit. And now my interest is peaked. And next thing I know, within 20 minutes, my entire timeline is just John Calipari is headed to Arkansas. And Sham Sharania is tweeting that it seems like John Calipari is heading to Arkansas. And Matt Norlander over at CBS is pointing out all of the big chicken money behind this because apparently Tyson Foods and their heir is friends with John Calipari. And there's a relationship there. And they have just thrown all the money in the world to bring John Calipari, who we just 
weeks, a week ago, two weeks ago, sat down with the Kentucky athletic director and said, we're going we're gonna to move on from the loss to Oakland. We're going to move forward in our quest of winning a championship together. And now John Calipari is like, beep, beep, see ya. Going to Fayetteville. What? The, the thing that, that makes sense to me. The thing I mean, that. technically. Te do you want to be at Kentucky when your seat is hot and you got to win a championship? No. Uh, right. In <laughs> and Arkansas. the fans have turned on you? Yeah, no. Like, and then, so this, we've seen more coaches do this, where they got good jobs, but the seat is warming up or they're outright on the hot seat and they just bolt for another job. It's like, okay, fine, I'm out by Jimbo Fisher and football immediately comes to mind. Seat was warming up at Florida State. There was some frustration, some headbutting going on there between Jimbo and the brass, but the seat was warming up a bit at Florida State. And Jimbo said, all right, I'm out. I'm done recruiting. I'm going to take this Texas A&M job. And just boom, leaves. The the thing that surprised me, why am I blanking on Arkansas's former coach, the one who's at Eric USC? Musselman. The Musselman. Whole... Like that, that's the one that surprises me. Why would you leave Arkansas for USC? Arkansas is... By tradition and here recently, the much better program, significantly better program. And it had the USC. money behind them, which is perfectly so clear. So why 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 does he make that leap from that leap from Arkansas, which is also in the SEC, mm -hmm. to USC, which is in the Big Ten, right? So you're you're already in one of the power. You're already in one of the two power conferences remaining. Yeah. I didn't understand that move. But do you want to live in Los Angeles versus Fayetteville? And that's a personal decision. One that Eric Musselman made can you win in los angeles because nobody We're else can find out nobody else could we got very, very took seldom, to one elite eight very seldom has the usc basketball program been was it only i thought it was an elite eight very seldom my point is very seldom has the usc basketball program achieved what arkansas has a, achieved right sweet 16's elite eight they did make it to the elite arkansas eight, though, has a, a national championship as well in the 90s which is Damn near 40 years ago, but which is insane. Well, USC's to say. last Final Four was 1954. Come on, so. man. Like that, that's <laughs> the, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But on the Cal side, listen, my seat is warm. Y'all want me up out of here. Y'all are turning on me. Let me look around and find something else. Oh, right. Arkansas is open. I can win at Arkansas. I you telling me I got Tyson behind me? You telling me I got Walmart money behind me? Yeah, I can do some things at Arkansas, and they're so they're not as entitled as Kentucky fans are at this point in time. So they'll be fine with a couple of Sweet 16s. They'll right. be fine with finishing in the top three or the top four of the SEC. They'll be fine when I send three, four, five dudes in one draft class to the NBA and those three, four, five dudes become all NBA type players, all stars, that sort of thing. They'll be fine with that. It resets his his. Uh, coaching clock. It takes him firmly off the hot seat. He's getting money. He's staying in the conference. He doesn't have to relearn anybody. He's not like he's got to re-scout right. everybody in the SEC. He He's already knows who he's going to play. It's a good move for Cal. They're estimating that the NIL package at Arkansas will be upwards of $5 million. And you throw that on top of what a they player? will pay. Let's go. If you got a good player on your team right now, go to his dorm room, take his phone, and take all of his communication devices. Don't let him talk to anybody, not even his mama. Cal put, a, is coming. put a chair up against the door and say, do your homework. Study. This is this is study season. Finals have to be near. I don't know. That's how, how it used to work. But it is one of those reminders, too, where if like you're still out there chirping about, I hate what the transfer portal and NIL is doing to college sports. Like You just had a coach do the exact same thing. This has been the problem forever. And now players can do the same thing. So if you're not mad at John Calipari for taking more money and a better financial situation to transfer, transfer essentially from Kentucky to Arkansas, uh, the same thing goes for players. So Yahtzee, everything is open. And who would have thought that when it's honestly the biggest of domino moves from SMU getting to the ACC, because if SMU hadn't gotten to the ACC, then maybe SMU doesn't fire their coach, Lanier, because they thought that they needed a better coach going into the ACC, and then SMU takes Andy Enfield from USC, which things were moving to a point where he was no longer the viable uh, long-term solution another there. Another coach leaving a bad situation exactly. for him. Hot seat. Bumps, bumps on over to SMU, and then USC takes Eric Musselman, and now Arkansas takes John Calipari, and now we will see who Kentucky takes. Gary Parrish might join us later today. He'll join us at some point throughout 
this week. He is the busiest man in March, obviously, with the men's national championship game going on later today in Glendale, Arizona. Eventually, we'll get his take on it, but phew, wild time. So that kept me up far later than I anticipated last night because it's one of those, like, you have to be there moments on social media. It was a have-to-be-here moment in Memphis this weekend on Saturday night, not because the Grizzlies played the Sixers. No, 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 no but because it was Marc Gasol's jersey retirement night. And it was just such an incredible celebration. There were so many emotions tied to it. The core four getting together, the band back together again for the first time since 2017. I know there were many tears shed in FedEx Forum on Saturday night. I heard from a ton of people. I saw a bunch of people who talked about how emotional it was, how wonderful it was to just sit and really appreciate this moment, and while yes, it was all about getting to see that number 33 hang from the rafters, and it is a jersey. We have moved on from the records that we had with Zebo's jersey retirement, his jersey now, the number 50 hangs as well in FedEx Forum. So you have the number 50, you have the number 33. And just as Marcus All would have wanted, somebody who doesn't love a whole lot of personal attention, and I know the past week and some change has been like an onslaught of media and um, like public opportunities in Memphis, which have been so fun to be a part of as well. Um, but it was so much about the team and it was about the history of the Grizzlies and the history of the core four. And I have never sat through a game, CJ, where the game mattered less. And like, I mean that in the most respectful way possible. But for Grizzlies Sixers, they had eight players available. They had to sign a hustle guide to a 10-day contract so they even met the league minimum of players available going into that game. The only player who was a fully contracted player at the beginning of the season who was on the court for the Grizzlies on Saturday night was Brandon Clark, and he did have a sick dunk where I was like, oh, he's." We, we've said Brandon Clark is back. Brandon Clark is back, back. No, Brandon Clark is back, back, back. That dunk was so reminiscent of the bounce and what Brandon Clark is as a player. So that was exciting to see. Outside of that, no one really cared about the fact that the Grizzlies and the Sixers were playing a game, so much so that sitting on Radio Row, it was so interesting to watch fans put their backs to the game over and over and over again because they just wanted a glimpse of Marc Gasol. They just wanted a glimpse of the core four. And Gasol started in a suite with his brother Pau and his family, and there was a really nice moment early in the game where they put him up on the Jumbotron and he waved to the fans and, and acknowledged the love and just feeling that moment of support. But then he moved over into the suite, which was just like the Grizzlies reunion suite, and it was him, and it was Zebo, and it was Tony Allen, and then suddenly you're like, oh, that's Rudy Gay, and that's... John Luer and that's Quincy Pondexter and, and like the list is going on and on and I went to the bathroom in the second quarter and I had to wait because they were doing an interview with Dave Yeager in front of the suite and so I'm standing there and then when I came out of the bathroom it was Marc Gasol just talking to all these people involved in Memphis and with the Grizzlies and it was just that kind of energy all night and so understandable like the halftime show shout out to the crew who put the halftime show together because to have DJ Paul, to have 8-Ball, MJG, I'm doing the halftime show on the radio. There's nothing I wanted to be doing less than the halftime show on the radio. I'm like, lolly, 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 let me see you pop that body. Were you, were you there or did you watch it on TV? I caught it on TV. Okay. It was a, listen, man, the, the energy was transferable through the, the TV as, as well. And it's just People outside of Memphis who want to be jerks about the situation aren't going to understand. No. They just aren't. When you talk about a, a franchise that one of the newest from a history standpoint, I'm going to say one of, but I think it's the newest. Them and the Raptors have the newest um, sort of thing going on as far as a, a history standpoint of, hey, how long this franchise has been in existence. You know, those guys matter. Did they win a championship? No. And we'll we'll talk some about that a little bit later on in the show. A championship cannot be the only way you measure what something's impact mm -hmm. is or was in the moment. It just can't be. The impact that the core four had, all four of them, and it's hard to talk about one. We're gonna give him, I'm gonna give Mark his flowers in a, in a second, but it's hard to talk about one. It was my had a difficult time talking about Zach Randolph without mentioning Tony Allen, yeah. without mentioning Mike Conley, without mentioning Mark Gasol. Right, it, it's hard to discuss one without all of the other ones. When you look at their stats, you're like, "Oh, these stats aren't that impressive, are they?" It's like 
18 and 10 and, and 19 and 12. Like those, those are double doubles. <laughs> sure, Tony Allen might give you eight and then play yeah. really good defense. We don't have a stat that measures defense and heart and grit and grind. We don't have stats that measure what this team meant for the franchise as a whole. The, the franchise is in a better place now, in a more stable place now, because the fan support is what the fan support is. And you're not getting that fan support without those four dudes. And it was great to see Marcus All get acknowledged for his role in helping to solidify the Memphis Grizzlies' place in this city and in the NBA. Yeah, and seeing the fans stick around on a Saturday night, like, that's a team that's won 27 games this season. And listen, I'll be the first to say, I've been impressed by the fan support period throughout this year because there have still been people. It could be a lot more empty in that building. But Saturday obviously had a different kind of energy. And yes, it was going late. And yes, that third quarter took forever. And yes, you're watching a guy named Mal Pereira who you didn't know existed a couple of weeks ago. And you're like, ah. I love his energy. I love his effort. And you're sitting there just waiting for this all to come to a head. And, and the videos that played throughout, you had messages from Lionel Hollins, who wasn't able to attend the game. I think I saw that, he was at the Final Four. Yeah, that made me sad a little I bit. I know. Me too. We, we, we've got to get everybody here because what's the core four without the coach? Maybe at the end. <laughs> so it's, Maybe it so last, uh, correct me, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Last time, last retirement, it was Zach. Mark was there. Allen was there. Lionel was Alan there. Allen was not no, there so no because it was during okay. the legal issues gotcha. and no Conley last time. And honestly, like, shout out Mike Conley because that's the thing. Everyone's looking into those suites waiting to see, is Mike Conley going to be here? Because it started trickling out. Mark gave his media availability on Friday, and I know there was this, this desire of this to be a surprise, but Mark kind of gave it away saying this is going to be the first time that the four of us are back together since we last played together in 2017. And you looked at the schedule and you knew Mike Conley had a game in Phoenix on Friday night. You knew Mike Conley had a game in Los Angeles on Sunday night. You know the Minnesota Timberwolves are in the midst of trying to secure the one seed in the Western Conference. And yet what did Mike Conley do? He flew in for the night. He made sure that he was in that building. That's Mike's fault. That's his fault. Retire like the rest of them. No. Go. You don't got to keep doing this. <laughs> Retire, move to Memphis. He, also was, the, you he here. was the drippiest dude on the court, too. Like, he came. His fit was on because he's, point. he's still because playing. Because he's still playing. He's yeah. still influenced <laughs> by the youths and everything involved in that. But he's giving his media availability at the end. And he says, listen, I've got to wrap this up. I've got a flight in 30 minutes. I have shoot around in the morning. And guess what? His karma was rewarded because the Timberwolves beat the Lakers last night. And I was happy for that for Mike. And I've heard a lot of sentiment of, oh, I can't get behind rooting for the Timberwolves and Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. But... I can root for Mike Conley because in a similar fashion to how people really rallied around the Toronto Raptors and Marc Gasol's championship run, it just there's a connectivity that doesn't leave when you leave Memphis. Like once you're a Memphian, always a Memphian when it comes to that degree. And we really saw that in, in full display. And like Mike Conley himself was videotaping, not videotaping, but on his phone recording when the jersey went up. And he was like, listen, I never do this, but I want to remember this moment forever and everyone who was in that building will remember that moment forever anyone who was watching from afar i know they've put up the entirety of the celebration on youtube so people can keep watching it and i'm with you like if you don't get it you're not going to get it but that doesn't matter you, wh whatsoever but you should be able to what team was it that made you fall in love with whatever franchise it is that you cheer for yeah and then understand that that's what they are for this city that we love them in this city because of what they did. This was a franchise that before they got here hadn't won a playoff game. Not only did they win a playoff game, they won a series. They got to a mm -hmm. Western Conference final. They were one of the teams who you're, you're talking about it like, oh, you, I don't think anybody wants to play Memphis in a seven-game series. They're a push punch by Zach Randolph to Steven Adams' jaw away and a bum a hamstring from Tony Allen and a broken face by Mike Conley away from potentially – you know, making some noise in the NBA Finals, yeah. making an appearance in the NBA Finals potentially. Like, that matters. It yeah. does. So, I get it. You've got a, a franchise that you cheer for that's been around since 1929 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they've got six championships, possibly none post 80, right? Like, okay, I get it. Y'all got championships. Y'all are going to retire those dudes' numbers. But you have to take a look around and take stock of the situation and say, hey, this player meant something for this franchise, regardless of stats and wins. That person's impact is so great, so large that it's worthy of being honored and right. remembering.
Can I can I whisper something? Oh, we whispered. Can I can I whisper one because it, it fits perfectly? I wasn't sure I was gonna say it, but it, it goes into to what you just said. Well, when we whisper, we zoom in, zoom in. Okay, I'm, I'm whispering it because I don't I don't want to make too big of a deal about it, and I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. I would have loved to see all of the current Grizzlies stay for the entirety of the celebration. Santi Aldama was there the entire time, well, and it made bang. sense. He's from yeah. one Spaniard to the next, and it obviously meant something to him, and he stayed around for like the post, post celebrations as well, and that was cool to see. And I know I saw Jaron down there, I saw Zaire down there, I saw Mal Pereira down there. I think Trey Jemison was there, at least through the core four conversation, where they're chilling in the chairs with Pete Pranico, which was wonderful. And I don't want to speak definitively, because people could have been somewhere else, you don't know where anyone's at. And I know it's a generational thing, and I know I'm not whispering anymore, so like we can, you know, keep it at that. It's a different, I, I see a lot of like, oh, it's just a different generation. It just meant so much. And even if you're of the sentiment of like, ah, oh, the core four, you had to be there. Well, you're here now. And I kind of push back on that because there's this, oh God, there's another bird behind me. Isn't Missed there? it. Maybe I should just shut up. <laughs> no, keep going. No, I just, I think there's this level of respect. And I, that makes me feel like such an old head even saying that. Like, ah, the kids these days don't respect their elders and don't respect what came before them. But like to see just how much that meant, I would have loved to have seen some semblance of like, ooh and awe from the younger guys who, yes, weren't there outside of Jaron Jackson Jr., didn't play with Marc Gasol, didn't experience the core four, but understanding like the history that was set by that group and what it means to the Memphis Grizzlies as an organization, it's not, again, it's not the end of the world. I just would have liked to see it. That's all. What do they have to understand the history for? Go out there and play basketball. Sure. Like it's, but like, you're there they, for they it's also, one night. It's they, like we all have to sit through I, ceremonies. I would, I would assume. No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> We don't. I skipped my uh, eighth grade year, ninth grade year. We were supposed to go to graduation for the seniors. You do a ninth grade gra Oh, for the seniors. Yeah, we have to show up. That's a good point. Yeah, so I skipped that. I didn't go to any yeah, of the I high school have, graduation. Didn't have a tie into them. I ran out, snuck out, jumped the fence, and went to Mr. Gaddy's Pizza. My point is, like they they probably talked to these dudes. You know, they they play. They some of them certainly played against Marcus All. They're still playing against Mike Conley. I would assume that there's some sort of not an in-depth relationship, but there's some sort of relationship there where it is. Hey, if I wanted to talk to him, I could reach out and talk to him. I don't have to sit here for the pompous yeah. circumstance ceremony. And they have. And I want to be clear too. Like every time Marcus All spoke this week, it was always about the excitement of the future. And like he talks regularly with. Ja and Jaron and Dez and is very much a part of like the new core group that is going to hopefully lead the Grizzlies back to a place where he helped lead the Grizzlies, which is to a conference finals and which would hopefully be to an NBA championship someday. Um, I, I get it. It's, it's one of those things. Again, it's not the end of the world, but I did love this this whole situation and, and for the game itself and like the clandestine nature of it too with it being the Sixers on the other side and Kyle Lowry's there playing for Philly and Nick Nurse is the coach and he was Marcus Gasol's coach in Toronto and so all of the connectivity there and I just like I craved I love a good story I love a good moment sometimes to a fault and so like the perfect moment would have been like all of the generations all there at the very end but it was just such a wonderful evening and something to look back on and be like wow we get two more of these because we will get a Tony Allen jersey retirement and we will get a Mike Conley retirement when he does eventually someday retire. And then the hope is that down the stretch, there's going to be more of these with a John Morant someday or a Jaron or a Dez. And like the future is the rest is still unwritten for the Memphis Grizzlies and where it goes. I'm in my Natasha Bedingfield move. Did you see that clip of um, Kelsey Plum eating popcorn like a... Like one of your people. True weirdo. Yes, yes. like one <laughs> of your people. I saw somebody say, this makes me feel like I'm in a safe place shopping at TJ Maxx listening to a Natasha Bedingfield song in 2007. And the rest is still unwritten. All right. Calm down. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else. No one else can feel the words on your lips. Trying to think. Right. Was there the Bongo lady was there? They bongo, the bongo lady was there. It was beautiful. And oh, Dylan Brooks's video for Mark was perfect. That was the one that I wanted to mention because he said that Marcus all called him a fool throughout his entire rookie season. And it was so quintessentially uh, Dylan. And the reaction of the fans was wonderful. Like I, I loved that whole moment. And it just speaks to 
everything with this team. I loved it. it it's been a tough season, and we haven't had a whole lot of feelings of like sheer wonderfulness in FedEx Forum this year, and that was that on Saturday night. So was happy to be there, excited for the end of this season, which is now trailing down. We are in the last week of the Grizzlies season. They will be back at home tomorrow to face the San Antonio Spurs. We will take a quick break. When we come back, we will talk about the women's championship game. Dawn Staley, South Carolina, completes a perfect season. Caitlin Clark ends her time at Iowa, ends her time in women's college basketball. Not career, because the WNBA draft is a week from today. Yes, it comes at you fast. Get ready, new WNBA fans. You don't have a lot of time to breathe. Uh, we'll get into all that along with the men's championship game that is today night when we come back. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board. A class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, DBWR. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. Anticipate each challenge, make a quick response, capitalize on every opportunity, and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. beautiful Monday. The eclipse is later today. I need eclipse glasses, so if anybody is downtown Memphis and has a spare pair of eclipse glasses, please shoot me a message because I'm desperate to not burn my eyeballs out today. Our eyeballs were treated to some great basketball over the weekend. Uh, the South Carolina women's team, national champions, a perfect 38-0 and season after taking down Iowa in the national championship game yesterday afternoon. The biggest stats of that game 
game. The South Carolina bench outscored the Iowa bench 37 to nothing. And they had nobody who could deal with the size of Camilla Cardosa, who had 17 rebounds for South Carolina in that game. There's so much to say about this South Carolina season and the difficulties of completing a perfect season. But the thing that stands out to me the most, the thing that needs to be discussed the most, Don Staley is the best. Like, Don Staley is truly unique in that she is undeniably great. Like, she has three titles now. We are talking about dynasty building, dynasty establishing. In the last three years, her teams have lost a grand total of three games. They're 109 and three in the last three seasons. And the way that she reloaded last year's team, she loses three players to the top 10 of the WNBA draft, including National Player of the Year, Aliyah Boston, who was the number one pick. All five starters from last year's team, they're gone. She's able to build back a team that, yes, has a bench that allows them to score 37 points, a bench that is deeper than the ocean, and goes out there and wins a national championship and completes a perfect season, which is so hard. But the thing that stands out to me is that usually with great coaches and great athletes, like that generates a healthy amount of haters. There is something inherently antagonizing about greatness. It just comes with the territory. But when I watch Dawn Staley, all I think is she is so cool. She is so likable. She is so real. I watched the game yesterday with Iowa fans who were understandably devastated that the season came to an end without a championship, that Caitlin Clark's time at Iowa had come to an end and and everything that that means. But they just looked and they go, well, at least we lost to a real one. And there's Great truth in that. And Dawn Staley afterwards was so emotional and watching the tears flow in such an authentic way. And she's wearing that bomb-ass Louis Vuitton metallic jacket. And Aaliyah Boston is there supporting her former team, her former coach. The current players are there. They clearly love their coach so much. And it's just, it shows how difficult it is to complete a perfect season, how hard it is to win a championship. And then in the midst of all that, what does Dawn Staley do? She has the wherewithal. She has the, the grace to shout out Caitlin Clark, and in the midst of her team celebrating winning a championship, you have Don Staley personally thanking Caitlin Clark for lifting up the sport this year, for carrying a heavy load for the sport, and she said, quote, uh, it just is not going to stop here on a collegiate tour, but when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to lift that league up as well, so Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our game, we appreciate you. Let there be no questions, she said it right there, and I love that, because it Don Staley did some of the hard work for us. And I know there will still be people out there who refuse to acknowledge Caitlin Clark as one of the goats. <laughs> but to have the coach of the team that just beat Caitlin Clark and kept her from winning a title say with her heart, with authority, she's still one of the goats. I just thought it was a really cool moment. And, and again, just like completely encapsulates Don Staley as a leader, as a coach, and as one of the beacons of women's college basketball. People are weird about yes. this sport. And they're sports weird. period. Well, no, well, extra weird. Yeah. Okay. Sports period fandom. We're we're a bunch of nerds watching these men and women, young men, young women go out there and compete at a high level, doing things that most of us have never done in our life and will never be able to do in our life. When I say weird about this sport, they are really sexist and alarmingly racist as well. Yeah. So the 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 Dawn Staley. Um, Hater, she's a villain in in most circles. She's a villain, and she's a villain because she's a successful black woman coaching a bunch of successful young women. Like that's that's the the issue there. The, the and then she you know she's comfortable enough in her skin to answer questions that nobody else has to answer. I don't recall getting Gina Ariema's take on trans women coming over and playing basketball. I don't recall getting Kim Mulkey's. I don't recall no. getting. Well, listen. <laughs> You might not like it, but I don't recall the question being asked to them right. going into a Final Four championship type of game and type of setting. So, like, those those are things off court from people who are have the phobics and the, the isms by, attached to them that come out and come about towards Dawn Staley, and she faces those challenges head on, though. Mm -hmm. She doesn't shy away from them. She is clear. She's concise. She's direct. 
and what she means and what she wants to say. I think that it her reaction sh should show everybody. Hey, winning these things is not guaranteed. It, it just isn't. Yeah. She's she's breaking down emotionally up there, 38 and 0, beating one of the greatest women college basketball players ever. She's breaking down emotionally in that moment because yo, it's it's not guaranteed that she's going to win that moment. The pressure, the release she must have felt. I don't know in that moment what she felt more of. Just jubilation and joy or relief. Because those tears felt very like, oh gosh, this burden is off of me now. I can breathe. I can I can relax a little bit. And Dawn Staley, she she gets it not just from a on the court sort of standpoint, but you know, she talked about it during the the uh after she gathered herself, after she gathered her composure. You have to let young people be young people. Mm -hmm. You guide them. You absolutely guide them. But, yo, young people are going to do young people things. It's not going to make sense to you. Right. It, it doesn't have to make sense to you. The songs, the dancing, the way they dress, it just isn't. But you were young once. We were young once. And the things we did didn't make sense to the older people in our lives. You have to let, em let them embrace themselves while guiding them and keeping them safe. And Dawn Staley does a great job of that at South Carolina. Three championships, one of five coaches with three championships uh, in the women's college game. It's a great story. I'm, I'm super happy for her. I did want to, and it's exactly true, but her not running away from the outkick troll who tried to bombard oh, her. Of course it was. I didn't know bar school. You act like they don't exist. Yeah, but I don't even think they would push into that territory ahead of that game and that final four weekend and Don Staley in a moment where she could have said anything, right? She takes the, she takes the drink, she takes her time, she gathers herself. But the fact that she didn't run away from supporting trans rights in that moment, uh, just further solidified her as an absolute queen to me and, and somebody who you want leading the sport and being an active voice within the sport and it just it speaks to the fact that just like Caitlin Clark is able to take great pride in the fact that she helped catapult women's basketball this year into a new realm like that elite eight game I can't wait to see the numbers from yesterday's final game because the elite eight game was the most watched basketball game in ESPN history like more than any men's college basketball game, more than any NBA game. ESPN has had the rights to NBA games since 2002. No game before had as many viewers than the UConn Iowa game. And Caitlin Clark did that. Like she has brought so many new fans to a sport that was in a really healthy place already because of people like Don Staley. Like Don Staley helps create the current landscape. Don Staley's South Carolina teams, the Asia Wilson team, and Asia Wilson growing into one of the stars of the WNBA. Like, this is all interconnected. Like, we don't have to talk about these things so singularly. We do that in sports all the time. But it's all woven into how women's college basketball was consumed this year rapidly and understanding that some of those fans are going to go to the WNBA with a Caitlin Clark and with a Camilla Cardosa, and there's new faces with an Angel Reese, um, new faces for people to root for. And I just think it's cool. Like, you have the, the older players in it. You have the coaches in it. You have new fresh faces. You have next girls up who are coming up. Great freshmen and Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo and Stolke at Iowa. I hope Stolke stays at Iowa. Like, I hope they build around her because she's a hell of a player herself. Um, but it was just so fun. And I got a little teary-eyed at the beginning of that game. I'm not going to lie. It's like, oh, this is why women are too emotional. <laughs> but it was just so meaningful to see how many people were in there and how many people were consuming that in the middle of the afternoon. And uh, shout out South Carolina, though. And it was a better feel from an atmosphere yes. standpoint than what the men are going to do tonight because it's not in one of these mega arena type type situations this weekend i watched a uh, way more women's sports than i intended not saying it was a bad thing but i, I didn't know the she believes cup yeah. was happening this weekend and they played in front in atlanta in front of fifty thousand plus people i and that was a record for attendance for a u.s women's soccer match uh friendly over here in, in America, and that's that's big. The way women's sports is growing and continuing to grow is is fun to watch and it's encouraging and it it 
notes and it, it's your mark. Hey, when you guys stop being sexist, when and by you guys, not just the, the fans, but the people in charge, when y'all start stop being sexist and actually try and start marketing these things, yeah, there's some storylines we want to see. There's some some greatness on the women's side of sports that we we will consume as as sports <laughs> lovers and as fans. And so go ahead, ESPN, something that. I think they they didn't do as good a job in years past. Uh, you can say maybe with INSQ they might have, but with Plum, I don't think they did a good enough job. Certainly not with Maya Moore or Tarasi or Bird or Shamika Holeslaw. Like, market these things. Yeah. Push these things down our throat. You don't have to talk about the Dallas Cowboys every block of every day. You can, you can bombard us with Caitlin Clark. That's fine. <laughs> That's how that works. You bombard us with LeBron James, bombard us with Caitlin Clark, bombard us with some of these great women athletes out there playing right now. And when time comes for us to watch them go out there and compete live on TV, fans show up for that. They do. I hope this is, think about where the game was 2020 and how laughable and frustratingly laughable the NCAA's management of the women's tournament was as recently as 2020. And then they do the, the comprehensive uh, investigation. They hired the firm to do the investigation. It's like, okay, here are the things that you guys need to change to make this more marketable. The money is there. The money has always been there. You guys are holding yourself back. And the, so far um, here recently, they've done a much better job of pushing stars to the forefront. Like, how long would it have taken us to learn Juju's name in 2012, 2013? Right. Would we even know about Juju in, at, at that point in time? No, you but, wouldn't have known about her until the tournament run, and then you would have put a small pin in it and been like, oh. Which tournament run? Not this year's this run. This year's. No, no. Yeah. No, we're not learning. In 2012, we're not learning about Juju until her senior year tournament run. That's when it's like, oh, that's Juju from 2012, 2013. I remember her from doing that right. thing as a freshman. No, like, that's, that's, that's when. Because that, that would be the only time they would yeah. talk about women's college basketball. Yeah. And there are great freshmen lined up. Why am I blanking on the, the two Hidalgo. from South, Cal oh. South Carolina? So you got Hidalgo. Yes. You got Cook in, in Iowa State. You got her running mate in Iowa State. You got Juju. You got two at South Carolina. UConn has, uh, what's her name, Shade? Like, you, you've got yes. women running around, young women as you freshmen. Paige coming back to, to UConn build next on. year, Paige which is is coming exciting. back. You've got women to build on to keep this momentum uh, going forward. Full Wiley. Full for Wiley. She, she deserved, she deserved her name to be who, said. Who apparently can dunk. That's <laughs> like she's like yay high. She got hops. She went behind the yeah. back on a uh, penetrating to the rim, going from right to left. Went right hand, took it behind the back, and didn't it blew the layup. But it was like, mm -hmm. oh okay, she's a freshman, but she's gonna be fun to watch the next two or three years. Women's game is in. Women's sport is, is in a really good place right now. Also, shout it. out Raven Johnson because she deserved a shout out for her revenge tour. Uh, many have pointed out the clip of Caitlin Clark waving her off in last year's game. Yeah, she can shoot that and then to have the defensive performance because Caitlin Clark started that game yesterday and you were, I to myself was like mm, apologies might need to be made to Haley Van Lith like Caitlin Clark might just be unguardable like nobody can do it and then the way Raven Johnson turned it up in the second quarter and beyond yes she had 18 in the first quarter she had 12 the rest of the way yes she has 30 points but on what like 28 shots it was a better hard that was a better game plan than what LSU had. Correct. I, I, you make LSU Caitlin, put HVL in on well, well, an awful situation. It's, it's, whoever you're pitting on Caitlin Clark, if you allow her to get back left, she's going to kill you with a step back. Make Caitlin Clark drive and make her finish through length at the rim. And she's, she's such a good passer that she'll pass the ball going to the rim to a teammate that's pretty open. And then it's just like, yo, if the teammate makes a shot, oh, well. We just don't want Caitlyn to make that shot. They left. They said, hey, HVL, right. just guard her straight up. Let her do whatever she wants. No, force her right and then make her finish through length. And the other freshman, Tessa Johnson, who had the 19 off the bench, it reminded me very much of Jasmine Carson, not from a freshman standpoint, but just in the LSU-Iowa game last year. It was like, oh, who's this random player off the bench who's torching Iowa right now? It was Memphian, Jasmine Carson last year. It was Tessa Johnson yesterday, just a freshman. Anyway, very exciting times ahead in women's basketball. We've got a great game tonight. I actually... I'm legitimately pumped for the men's national championship game tonight between Purdue and UConn. We'll take a quick break. We'll talk about it on the other side. My only issue with it is the start time. We'll get into it when we come back.
Grizzlies fans, after exciting hoops and a lucky night of gaming, where do you rest your head? Look no further than Southland Casino Hotel, proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies. Our high-rise hotel is the epitome of luxury and comfort. Picture this, you've just finished an evening of gaming and dining, so you head on over to one of our 300 rooms to end the night. Choose from standard suite and presidential suite, plus we're pet friendly and offer mobility scooters for rent. It's a seamless experience for everyone. And don't miss the Main Street Exchange, right in the heart of our casino lobby. Whether you're craving a snack or need a souvenir of your stay, we've got you covered. From polo shirts to shot glasses, take a piece of the Southland excitement home with you. So come stay and play at Southland Casino Hotel, where every moment is designed for your enjoyment. Book your hotel stay by calling 833-703-3350 or visit online at southlandcasinohotel.com slash hotel. Guests must be 21 years of age or older to check in at hotel. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800-522-4700. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. This is an actual good shoe. Yeah, it looks like, like this a, good is a shoe. real good shoe. What okay. you think about them, uh, KJ? She <laughs> likes Cheetos. <laughs> like Cheetos? Yeah, yeah, nice. You like Cheetos? Kids, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. For kids, for one kids, thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, if I was still playing basketball, I like I played in brightly colored shoes. I, I wore pink shoes a lot of the yeah. time or purple shoes. Like I like that. The Sneak Fest Show live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Are you a healthcare professional looking for a new experience? Look no further than Travel Nurses Inc. Our extensive network of healthcare facilities across the country offers you the opportunity to discover new destinations while pursuing your passion. We provide competitive compensation, flexible contracts, and dedicated assistance. So join our community of nurses and allied health professionals and start your next adventure today. Visit our website at travelnursesinc.com for more information. Did you do anything in that St. Joe's game? No, I was strictly playing defense. Delonte West was tough. That's a pro. Oh, my God. That step back. Oh, left. wait, hold on. 40 minutes. You didn't even get a rest. No, I played, played the whole 40. game. Six for 11 from the field. That was me. 12 points, six rebounds, five assists. Oh, I was nice that game. <laughs> I thought I ain't getting double figures. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Welcome back. Welcome back. The men's national championship game is tonight. We get two of the best teams in college basketball from the year facing off in Glendale, Arizona. It is UConn and Purdue, 36-3. and UConn will try to be the first team to go back-to-back since Florida did it. Purdue at 34 and four. I'm excited for this game, hyped for this game. Why does it start at 8.20 Central Time? Why? You tell me. On a Monday night. You tell me. Why? Fix it. You fix it. Fix it right now. Like, how would you fix it? Hello. (laughs) Okay. President of the NCAA. What's his name now? I don't remember. Okay, Mr. President. Once Mark Emmert was gone. Hold on. Now I feel like I have to get the You don't have to get the president's name, right? Who cares? He's ruining the college basketball experience for us. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yeah. Do you not value sleep? At all. At all? At all. Did you see how the world, yeah, the world came together Mm -hmm. to watch a beautiful women's college basketball game in the middle of the afternoon on a Sunday? Two o'clock tip. I'm not even asking for a two o'clock tip. I'm asking for five. Six Eastern time, five Central time. Four, three. Four Mountain time, three Pacific time. 
And I believe Arizona, I always get confused I think what time zone five. they are. I don't know. They'd be four. Maybe. That sounds fine for a local time. On a Monday night. Pit the, at, Monday night. Pit the game on Sunday. Pit the game on Sunday well, and go back to back with the women. Okay. Let me hang up, Mr. Well, President. Hang up. All right. I don't love that. Why not? Because I don't love the idea that the women's game is the appetizer for the men's championship Who said game. it would be the appetizer? I guess it, yes, it would take like this, the this right year, PR this year, mode. This year, for instance, wouldn't the women play after the men? I would hope. Wouldn't that be the marquee? But I think you would have to. I don't know logistically okay, if you I could make you. that switcheroo. Like the better you. game should be the second game. And okay, let's let's take what you're saying. Why does it matter if the women play first? Well, it, and this is interesting because it used to be. There's been a long conversation of. Like, should the men's and women's Final Fours coexist, period? Should they be played in the same city? Should they right. be played in the same that, that stadium? Stu- that study we talked about early last segment, yes. that was a suggestion they made. Yes. Put it same city. But does that erase the individual attention that the women's tournament gets? As the women's tournament and women's college basketball continues to move into this greater space... Maybe that old argument dries up a little bit mm. because it wouldn't by nature just be latching on to the men's tournament. God, the men could be grateful for latching on to the women's tournament in the way things shook out this year, especially with just overall numbers and attention. Um, but we don't have to play games at 8.20 p.m. on a Monday night. That's no. 9.20 Eastern time. No. No. They, like, whatever the solution is, it's better, it's not than, that. It's better than that. It's not that. It, it can't it's be just, this. I, th- I always get this with even the Super Bowl. And I was thinking about this yesterday because it was Sunday, which is Super Bowl Sunday. That game could be played three hours earlier. I get the, pr- the allure of primetime. We have all been brainwashed into believing that primetime is the most important time to view sports. If it's not in primetime, people don't care about it. People aren't going to watch. That's not true. Value. Sleep. Value. How, how we, resting on a weeknight. How have we not moved away from this prime time? Since I don't of know thinking. because we with don't even exist we, on in television yeah, anymore. With the way we, stream. we stream things and what we are as a uh, as a collective society and how like on my phone right now I can pull up whatever I want to pull up to watch. I can pull up HBO Max. They got live sports. I can pull up Hulu. They got live sports. I can pull up Bally's. They got live sports. I can watch. The, the game, Grizzlies games from Saturday, if I want to, I can do that all within the palm of my hand. So the time, you, to your point, you shouldn't be glued to prime time. That's, that, all time is now prime time. We are living right now where every single second is prime time. Like, get, eight o'clock is too late. I'm emotional right now. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. No. And I want to watch. But I'm telling you, I'm probably going to tap at it like 9, 10, 9, 15. I'm with, I can't even take my afternoon nap today because I have to stay awake to watch it get to total darkness in the middle of the afternoon because I appreciate science make and sac- will be down at the Make park. a sacrifice, Jessica. Which one is more important? A once-in-a-lifetime eclipse that's happened twice in the past seven years? Or Klingon versus Edie. Or Klingon versus Edie. Make a decision right now. I, I'm going to attempt both. Hurley versus Painter. Make a decision. I'm going to attempt both. All right. Well. Okay? I'm going to march my little butt down to the park, and I'm going to watch the moon and the sun and the earth all come together to create a moment of darkness. I'm somehow going to get my eclipse glasses. I'm going to revel in the fact that we can so accurately pinpoint what time this is occurring across the world, across the globe. Can we get an out- outside shot? Shut up. Can we get an outside <laughs> no. shot? Get it in the sky. Nope, can't see it. Put it in the sky, Jacob. You will Jacob. not rain on my eclipse. Oh, I, I'm not going to rain on it. I'll you be cloudy will not on cloud it, though. cloud on my eclipse. Hey, it's Jessica. No. My, my G. Jessica. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's kind of cloudy. Okay, so my weather app. <laughs> uh, all right. What does your weather app say? Because, like, I see nothing it but gray. It says it's going to be it's gonna partly be. sunny. Partly sunny. Fully sunny at one. Okay. All right. It's a whole like hour and a half experience. Oh, is it? it I, apparently, okay. according to the five articles I've read trying to figure out what time I need to be down at the park. Some people drove all the way to Arkansas for this experience. Some people drove all the way to Memphis for this experience. Where? Arkansas where? I don't know. 
Jonesboro. Jonesboro. <gasps> That's like I'm saying. I, if we go to Jonesboro, like I, I'd oh, be down. I thought you were gonna say maybe because Jonesboro is close-ish. Yeah, to Fayetteville. Like, oh, okay. And maybe John Calipari will do his introductory press conference during the during eclipse. The eclipse. Oh. And what if he like trumped it and went outside without the glasses and just stared straight and was like, "My retinas you, are stronger than your retinas." When you use the phrase "Trump," yeah, I know. I thought I got you were you. playing like a Trump car. No, no you actually remember when that man you, went yes, and stared into yes, the sun? Yes, I remember it. You actually <laughs> made that man's name an adjective. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should go. I put in on gas. Jonesboro is what, like an hour and a half away? I have to walk and these dogs. They can't walk themselves? Oh. We have, we have, we talk about how soft this damn league is and how soft sports are right now, how soft these snowflakes are walking about. These dogs are soft. I remember back in my day, dogs used to just roam the street freely. They didn't need a leash. They knew where yeah, home was. It's true. They walked the street and they walked their asses back home. Now we got dog walkers and all. You got to walk the dog. Got to leave work during lunch to go walk the dog. Come on, man. What time do you got to walk these dogs? Because because that's the other thing. I know. You have to I want to do at a certain it. Time. I have to do it before the eclipse starts. Can you like run and do it after the show and then we no, leave? No, I have to do it at like eleven at the earliest. See, soft ass dogs make dogs great again. <laughs> Trump those dogs. <laughs> I do know a lot of people are making that trip. Memphis just felt crowded this weekend from the Gasol retirement. There were a lot of people down there. Wicked brings out so... I didn't know people still got up for Wicked in this way, but by God, they do, and I cannot wait to see it on Wednesday. Ah! And all the people who were here to see Wicked on Saturday and Sunday, and then you bring in the eclipse of it, and there are people who traveled to Memphis for the weekend who are then going to scatter and find various places to watch the eclipse. We don't get another one for 20 years. Oh, no. CJ's an eclipse hater. I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) I just don't get it. My fault. What's not to get? The, The moon moves over the sun. Like, okay. It gets dark. You know when else it gets dark? At night. At night. When, when the men's at national night. championship game tips it's off on at 8, way 20 too PM. late. Way too late. Play the game during the eclipse. Who do you, who do you think wins tonight? UConn. Seven I, and a half point favorites. Yeah, I take I take UConn in those seven and a half. I, I think they're too. big enough for for Edie. I I think they can attack Edie also on the defensive end. So many teams see Edie in the paint is like nope. That's seven four right there. That's seven four. Did you with, see DJ Burns reacting to yeah. him? He's like, dog, you you just big, you big as hell. <laughs> uh, I think UConn can go out there and get him. And I think uh, what's my man's name? UConn Klingon. I think Klingin. he can do a good good enough job of making life difficult for Edie. Here's my fear, and it was a fear that I had early in that South Carolina Iowa game. That this becomes a referee show, and they mm-hmm. start giving out ticky tack fouls. It'll be important for both of those to. To not pick up cheap fouls. Edie, I don't think you're going to have to worry about it. Edie doesn't contest shots at the rim for real. He's just like, oh, I'm bigger than you. Right. I'm just going to be in the way. He's not jumping or anything like that trying to get blocks. Klingon Klingin is, is athletic. Um, just not that, I'm not calling Zach Edie I am. athletic. I, Zach Edie's not athletic. Um, don't pick up like a cheap over-the-back foul or pick up a foul reaching for a ball at half court or accidentally plowing through somebody on a screen. Um, uh, I think that UConn, assuming foul trouble is not an issue, I think they win this one comfortably. I was impressed by both of those teams and what they were able to do mm-hmm. in their Final Four game, though. I thought Alabama, Alabama played Alabama basketball. They got hot, and they kept shooting it. Um, UConn just had enough to withstand that, and now I wonder where Oates is going. Like, does he, does he, if, he, if Kentucky comes a call in, like a, hey, come coach us. Think a little leave? SEC yeah. merry-go-round. Yeah. He could. I saw some rumbles on Scott Drew at Baylor. Mm. And the understanding. I mean, he's won I don't know if you know this. He won a championship. That's what I, heard. I heard it through the grapevine. Chris just texted me that we should go to Arkansas to see the eclipse. God bless. I can't. I can't leave my responsibilities, my duties. My duties, because I got to pick up the doo-doo. Get it? Eh, eh, eh. Oh gosh. Chris, oh, no, walk that the was dogs. very that was a very Kelsey poem of me. I apologize. 
on this fine morning. Um, no, I, I completely agree. Watching the UConn Alabama game during uh, the Grizzlies game on Saturday a little bit because again, we weren't really watching the Grizzlies game by the end of it. Uh, I really thought Alabama was going to cover, and then UConn just piled it on at the end, and that's what happens. They're, they're just a better team. They're the inevitability of UConn this season feels like it has all led to this. Now, that's another name that would be interesting would be Dan Hurley. I know Kentucky fans have convinced themselves. Wait, and which, I, which Dan Hurley? The, the head coach of UConn who might yeah, that, win back-to-back back national that. championships. Why the hell would he leave UConn? Great question. There were rumblings. I've now used rumble twice. <laughs> Murmurs. <laughs> Let's go to the thesaurus um, that he could be interested in the Kentucky job if it came open. I don't know why you would leave. You're in a great spot right now. I mean, it doesn't get much better. The comfort of, but we kind of had the same conversation with different sports, different floats, Jim Harbaugh yeah. and Michigan. You finally win it. You are at the top of the mountain. You are the most powerful man in Ann Arbor. Why would you go anywhere else? And he leaves for the NFL. And there's, you know, a bunch of NCAA stuff wrapped into that and, and the difficulties of being a college football coach versus an NFL coach right now. We've talked extensively about. Um, but perhaps with Dan Hurley, maybe you look at it as your next challenge. You look at the SEC as a place of continued importance and comfort. I say no. Isn't Dan Hurley of UConn? Like, isn't he? No. Okay. But he does feel right. northeastern. He, he feels like he's. Like, he's from Jersey City. Where did he, he play? He played at Seton Hall. Okay, there we so go. So he's big. He's okay. a big that's East. Fine. Of Big East, but that's that's fine. I don't I don't like when coaches are successful at their alma mater <laughs> at that level. Thought, does that does that hurt you personally? <laughs> well, when they leave, it's like, oh, okay, this this dude isn't gonna be any good. Yeah. When he leaves, um, but Hurley's not that. So it doesn't doesn't matter. I, uh, is is Kentucky a better job than UConn? What makes it so? Because I'm I'm not. I don't think that it is. I think that, and if it is, it's marginally better than than UConn. I think I that mean, that is a basketball school. The support there is for that men's and women's basketball program in a way that it's not at most places. Right. And Mark, Mark Stoops has brought Kentucky football too too high, man. And, and like I'm, I'm not sure if, even with the conference realignment stuff, I'm not sure how close we are, how likely it is that we're just going to get a Big Ten SEC uh, tournament. So as long as y'all are all competing in the same tournament, I think that you are better than fine at UConn, especially if you're successful. Is Kentucky? Yeah. How much more of a blue blood program is Kentucky than UConn? Whose blood is bluer? And has that blue faded? Hmm. Right? Mm. Like, is it a, a pale blue compared to a strong, deep blue? Like, what shades of blue are we discussing in this matter? Because, I mean, you just can't take away from the fact that UConn has won four national championships in the last 20 years. Kentucky, Kentucky has, has won one. one. Mm. Before 2012, their last one was 1998. Is that Tubby? That's Tubby Smith. Yeah, that's the Tubby one. UConn is... 99, 2004, 2009, 2011, 2014, 2023. No, wait, I'm sorry. That was their trips to the Final Four. Okay. Uh, championships, because I was like, it said 2024. I said, what, what does Wikipedia know that Wikipedia, we don't? Wikipedia, <laughs> keep that third eye open. It's all stayed. Excuse me. Uh, 99, 2004, 2011, 2014, and 2023. Kentucky is 1948. We all remember that season. 1949, whew, back to back. 1951, 1958, 1978, 1996, 1998, 2012. It's just fresher when it comes to UConn. You have more championship laden success in more recent memory at UConn. You can go to UConn, you can coach at UConn, and you can win. And you could be clear you can coach at, go to Kentucky, and you can win also. Of course. I think that the difference in the two jobs is right now for Hurley, because Hurley is there. If you're just throwing a random coach in and say, hey, pick between these two programs, I think most coaches take Kentucky. I think most coaches should probably take yeah. Kentucky. But Hurley is at UConn. Hurley has won at UConn. Why would you leave winning in a culture that you've built at UConn, a winning culture at UConn, at UConn, at UConn. Um, well, built it, right? Because they were down bad after Ollie. 
He comes in after yeah. Kevin Ollie. So he's rebuilt that that culture of winning at UConn, we'll say, to go to Kentucky where immediately you step foot in the door at Kentucky and the expectation is SEC tournament and regular season championship, one of those, and an Elite Eight Final Four run at least in your first year. I, I think that the weight of expectations at Kentucky is too great for a coach like Hurley who's got – winning and has built up enough goodwill to stave off some of those hot seat people should he have one or two bad years at UConn. It just wouldn't make sense to me for him to leave. But hell, it didn't make sense to me for Musselman to leave. Well, but hell, it didn't make sense for me for, for Jim Harbaugh to leave. None of this stuff makes any sense to me. They'll do whatever they do. What did Chris say? Did Chris say he walked the dog? <laughs> Are we going? No. Are we going to Arkansas? Well, he said, walk the dog earlier or later. <laughs> They'll live. Then he said, Kelsey Plum, LOL. Cringe white women behavior. <laughs> I'm, listen, I, I don't want to say this out loud. I didn't want to acknowledge this. It's okay. I saw the Kelsey Plum video. It's okay. And immediately was like, oh, that's just white girl stuff. Jessica does that all the time. Like, I immediately okay. saw it was like, wait, oh, wait, that's wait, Jessica. Wait, 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 wait. I take offense. I take offense. <laughs> Oh god, that sounded just oh god. I don't like to exist in the the like quirky girl. Like I'm just weird. There's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference between quirky and truly weirdo. And I like to think that I sit staunchly in the truly Let me weirdo tell you realm. Something. Let me tell you people something. I will talk to Jessica in the offices <laughs> and she will be doing everything but paying attention. No, she she pays attention. She's responding. Thank you. She is twirling. She is doing this thing for some reason mid-conversation. She's all here. Her, there's so many kicks. What if I just you have undiagnosed so, ADHD? You do, you do so many kicks for no reason. <laughs> You're just kicking. <laughs> like, that's just what you guys do. Now, listen. I'm white a dancer. Women, white women are not a monolith. <laughs> Let me be clear. But y'all do some things, man. <laughs> We're not a monolith. I love a twirl. I was just talking to someone about how devastating it has been of my Achilles recovery. Was it, was it me? Because you mentioned that like five times the past month. No, it was somebody at the Grizzlies game on Saturday. Thank you very much. <laughs> who was like, oh, you got to be back to 100%. And I was like, yeah, except I can't twirl anymore. And they, were, they just looked at me like, excuse me? And I was like, I can't do my turns. I, I didn't realize how much of a crutch in my life, a casual spin a spin and grin. I can see you eating popcorn like that. I can see you getting lost in the moment and just eating popcorn in a really, really odd fashion. Popcorn, Skittles, M&M's. Uh, pick one of those little finger well, I, foods. I eat Kit Kats like a psychopath. I was only thinking. That we were watching Sopranos last night because, again, we watched a beautiful basketball game that ended before dinner time. And we had a great dinner and watched two episodes of The Sopranos and then still had time to reflect on the John Calipari news last night. Um, but they were eating Kit Kat so normally. And I was like, why are you not eating around How are they the eating wafer? The Just normally. I <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be back on the other side. <laughs> It is the Hot Mess Express of which CJ Hurt is firmly planted on. Uh, we have to talk. We have to talk about our Memphis Showboats. Our Memphis Showboats who blew a double-digit lead in 45 seconds. We'll tell you how it was done. A uh, little rundown of Hot Mess Express. Hate is forever. NCAA gives no freebies. Is it lying or laying? We'll get into all of that. Oh, and there was a crazy video of someone who almost knocked herself out in a was it a Czechoslovakian? Czechoslovakian judo. She Wild did. Stuff. <laughs> CJ sent this and I said, what could the old oh God? We'll get into all that when we come back. Apparently, Jacob bet money on that. <laughs> Shut up. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're recruiting the best talent to help us develop the sustainable steel needed for today and tomorrow. Join us at the edge of the future. Visit www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our Dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our Dash team. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. 
Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. Let's talk about some of the guys who get dunked on the most. Mel Turpin. There's a great clip on YouTube, kids. Go look this up, where Michael Jordan gets the ball in the post, spins around John Stockton and dunks. As he runs down the court, a fan in Utah says, hey, pick on someone your own size. The next time down, Michael Jordan comes down, seven foot tall Mel Turpin's under the basket, and Jordan just hammers on him. And as he runs down the court, he turns to the fan and says, was he big enough? IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app did i invent this loki did you i spent years calling my ex-producer cowboy carson and now beyonce she and decides she, she, wants wind. To, she wants to dabble in country in the genre now she's calling her album cowboy carter when she's doing her next concert That's and right. she says hey my new album's about to come out uh inspired. cowboy carter I inspired just, by the gary Parrish show shout out gp in yeah. memphis the gary Parrish show live weekdays at 10 a.m on youtube at grind city media and the official grind city media app chugga 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 all aboard the hot mess express chugga 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 Express number one, Czechoslovakia, not a country. I didn't mean that. We'll get to the Czech MMA judo situation later on the Hot Mess Express. But we have to start with our dear Memphis Showboats. The Memphis Showboats who blew a game in the wildest of ways. The UFL tried to tell us, CJ. I know they tried to tell us because I was looking up the rules of the UFL and they have a video on YouTube explaining all of their rules that says no lead is ever safe. That is their whole thing. No lead is ever safe. Not even an 11 point lead for the Memphis Showboats with less than a minute to play. They were taking on the San Antonio Brahmas over the weekend. The Brahmas scored a touchdown to make it 19 to 14. What did the Brahmas do? Why are you saying Brahmas like that? What, how do you say Just it? Brahma. Oh. Brahmas. What is a Brahmas? A Brahma is a bull, I do believe. They're named after The Rock. The Rock used to call himself the Brahma Bull. Oh. Ooh, speaking of The Rock, what an appearance on Fox News. That was great. Um, but yeah, that's what a Brahma is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Set the, continue to set the stage. Now you have me annoyed about The Rock. Oh, well. Set the stage, Jessica. Well, now I'm looking at what a Brahma says. It's, it's a, a, a Brahma. It's just Brahma. The plural is Brahmas. Oh. Yes. A flock of Brahmas. What's the plural of? Wait, so what kind of? It's a cattle. Yes, it's a herd of Brahmas. Okay. So Brahma is a bull. He was the Brahma bull. All right. Continue. It is known for its characteristic of a large hump over its shoulders. Yes. <laughs> now you have your taxonomy lesson of the day. Anyway, they score. It's a five-point game. They have the opportunity um, to decide what they're going to do for their PAT. So you can either get one point if you – no kicks. No, no. You get – you can one go for one for from two. the two. You can get two points from the five. Or you can get three points if you go from the ten. So they go from the ten. Unsuccessful. So you're like, phew. Showboat's going to win this game. No. Instead of an onside kick, mm -hmm. they have the opportunity to do 4th and 12. So a 4th and 12 scrimmage play. Yes. Which they cut down from 4th and 15. It was 4th and 15 okay. last year. They didn't now like fourth that. 4th and, and 12 is more manageable. From their they own 28. So yep. if you don't make it, the other team gets the ball back in primo field position. But if yep. you do, you still have the opportunity to go and score. And they get it. They get the first down, they keep the ball, risk and reward, 
That is the status of the UFL. And they have a game-winning touchdown by who? Cody Latimer. Do you remember Cody Latimer? Was he South Carolina? He was, no, oh, he okay. was Indiana. Okay. And he played for the Broncos. No. Played. Yes. Wait, wait, was he? No, I don't remember. He was a second-round pick. Was he in front of Swag? Right, was Swag in front of him, Swag Kelly, and then he had that situation where he went into the wrong room uh, and passed out, and then they were like, okay, we, we're done with Jack Kelly. Was he? I, I, everything in me feels like he was. I could be mistaken, but yo, the, while you figure that out, the showboats. <laughs> what a memory. Look, look at that. What a memory. Oh, oh wait. Wait, am I wrong? Yeah, it's okay. another. By the way, it goes the, the showboats. The headline, I thought it was going to be because it was about like police and Cody Latmer, so I thought it was something in regards to that. But it was Broncos wide receiver Cody Latmer tells cops he's domestic violence victim still gets arrested. Was the headline? Oh, okay. Back in, anyway, he was on the Broncos Super Bowl winning team. Nice. He didn't do much, but now he's UFL dream crusher of the Memphis Showboats. Showboats were in full control of that game. The, the, the chat tells the us they were playing whoop that trick. But you can't play whoop that trick until after that conversion attempt is failed and then you can play it um don't play you can't play whoop that trick and lose mm. that's terrible um but the announcers pointed it out the showboats have got to find ways to score touchdowns in close they just do they settle for way too many field goals if, if just one of those field goals two of those field goals equates to touchdowns that's six additional points and now that's a completely different feeling of a of a ball game. They shut them out the first three quarters. The first half, they held them to 15 yards of total offense in the first half, which is incredible. That's wild when you stop and think about it. They're one and one though, so they they still got the whole season ahead of them. So according to dictionary.com, Brahma is not a bull. It's the creator god of the Hindu sacred triad, or the ultimate ground of all being in Hinduism. It's a little different. I'm telling you that it's a bull, Jessica. Well, I'm just saying if you look you, if up, if you look what? up Brahma bull, that it's the it's the cow with a daggum hump in the in the neck. There are multiple matches for Brahma. Okay. Thank you, AI, right. including you go. Hindu god, a chicken breed, and a mascot for the San Antonio XFL now UFL team. There you go. <laughs> I think they just made up a mascot. Oh, I see it now. Oh, that's a <laughs> ugly cow. Gosh, Jessica, will you stop body shaming the cows? That is one of the ugliest Why are you shaming the cows? I'm sorry. Stop body shaming them. I'm so sorry. Do you think you're pretty Jessica according to the cows? No. Okay. I mean, me. Beauty. Oh, stop it. All right, moving on to the next. Uh, I don't know if you saw this clip, but Roy Williams was at the Final Four game. One of the most fun things about the men's Final Four is seeing all of the old coaches get together and like fraternize. There was a picture of Jim Beheim and, um, oh my God, why can't I think of his name at the uh, Mark Few. And someone else was in the photo too. But Roy Williams is sitting there watching. And, and many noted, like, when it came to the Duke NC State game, uh, the biggest losers of that game were North Carolina fans because one of those teams was going to go to the Final Four. And Roy Williams, who goes to the Final Four just about every year since he retired. Fun fact, once upon a time, I tried to get Chris to take a picture with Roy Williams and we bum rushed him uh, coming out of an aisle. And I have this photo of the side of Roy Williams' face and Chris and he turned us down for a picture in that moment. And it still gives me the ick to this day that we even tried because it was very embarrassing. Um, but anyway, he's sitting there watching the NC State game and this clip was picked up. Take a look. Just a hater forever. Just, I needed a reaction cam on when they lost. Just to know how excited Roy Williams looked in that moment. So much of fandom is the hate. Yes. So much of it is the, the I'd say like 55% of it is the hate. I might not be a Michigan fan forever, but I will always hate Michigan State and Ohio State. And it looks like Roy Williams is, is uh, a subscriber of the same sort of belief. And I applaud it. Okay, I really didn't mean to go back to this, I promise. Why do you keep going back? There's an N at the end of Brahma. So they've shortened it. It's Brahman is technically the cattle blend. That's not the right word. Brand. Also, species that we're talking about. 
They were first introduced in Texas in the mid-1800s and are officially known as Brahman in the United States. The decision for the breed to be referred to as Brahman, as opposed to other versions of the name, was made in 1924 by a group of breeders in Houston at the Rice Hotel. Moving right along. Next up in the Hot Mess Express, other than my obsession now with, yeah, there, look, the more you know. This is an educational show. Is it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the NCAA gives absolutely zero freebies. None of them. Check out these cup holders that were seen at the Final Four over the weekend. This is for um, the game in Glendale at State Farm Stadium. Uh, Ford is a sponsor of the Arizona Cardinals, but obviously not a sponsor of the Final Four. So the NCAA had to put duct tape over all 70,000 cup holders with the Ford logo on them for the night. Can you imagine being the person whose job it was? And I would hope that they had a whole team of people who put the tape over the Ford cup holders because that is a lot when you look at how many seats are in that arena. I always think during a playoff time for the Grizzlies, we as a staff are the ones who get together and put the growl towels. And it's it's an arduous process of getting that many growl towels. That's like half the seats that you're dealing with in State Farm Arena. So shout out to the NCAA, staying petty forever. We routinely fumble the bag by giving free advertising out to various places. The NCAA <laughs> couldn't like, be nah, us. No, nah, dog. Nah. Like if it was us, we'd be like, ah, oh, whatever, it's a cup holder, who cares? <laughs> NCAA's like, hell no. We're like, oh that my black God, I had the greatest. I was at I started insert. this show with a shout out to the farmer's market. I was, I, this weekend, I was at X restaurant or X bar and we do it all the time. We shout need out to be flying more like, saucer. Shout out to the flying saucer, baby. The unofficial bar of the Sauced JBS forever. show. forever. We could be at the saucer anytime, <laughs> anywhere. You want to know where we should watch the eclipse? The flying saucer. Let's go. Why not? Why not? The NCAA Why not? says no. Get that out of here. We need to be more like the NCAA. Said no one ever. <laughs> Said absolutely no one ever. All right. I already did one dictionary.com uh, workup of the day with Brahman. <laughs> We had a wonderful moment from, I don't know, I don't know. We had a great moment from uh, Don Staley ahead of the Final Four weekend where she asked the fine reporters in front of her a very important English language question. Take a listen to what Don Staley wanted to know. I have a, I have a brief question because you guys are writers, right? I just, I just posted a tweet and we had a long discussion in our in our coaches meeting so our our players were in the locker room lying or laying down lying you sure so i, I well I, I told our coaches someone taught me you lie to get laid right <laughs> Sorry. So excited to be here. Um, she said with a... <laughs> I can't say it. With a what? I was going to say with a, a, a game cock on her visor. Turn up. Go Let's Cox. Go Cox. Um, the way it I is remember, a great question. The way I remember it is the Lil Wayne song, Women Lie, Men Lie. Sure. Say what you want, but the numbers don't lie. Yeah. Like, yes, women lie, people lie, things lay. Yes, that's how I've always. Yeah. I always thought of it from a standpoint of like, I lie down, yes. but I lay my phone down on the table. Yeah. Or I lay my clothes out before I go to sleep the next day. My mom was an English teacher. That's what she told me. English is stupid. It is. That's, it's the dumbest language to it. ever exist. That's it. And this is your most recent example of just how stupid the English language is can be all right next up uh this was a fan game at a new orleans pelicans game over oh, the weekend okay but would you i'm assuming they told him hey you got the there's no let's, way they told let's him. watch the, the video roll watch the, the video tape. so this man One, go. Uh, this i would it's think i'm throw. doing a free throw, throw contest you bounce it will you gotta bounce it Will, you, you gotta bounce, bounce it. it. You have to bounce it into the basket. So he's you have bouncing to bounce it, it yes, into the basket, And you Will. have less than 15 seconds to do it. <laughs> nope. Oh, boy. Well, this is embarrassing. Will, you got to bounce it. No, it's nope. not embarrassing. Okay. The rules were obviously not laid out to him in an effective way. You gotta way. bounce it. Will, 
Uh, we're about to go viral right now. We are about to go viral. Uh, Jessica, he told him, bounce it into the basket. I bet you he was told you got to bounce the ball into the basket from the free throw line. And in the moment, he just got so nervous, he just started shooting. Yeah, sometimes your brain breaks also, when you're on a big he stage. he didn't make any of those, did he? He made, he made the first. I think he made one the first one. one. He, made, right. well, he made until he starts getting screamed at. You have to bounce the ball. And then he's like, okay, let me bounce the ball before I take the shot. I was watching it, and I had no idea what was happening. I had to watch it twice. So I understand that it might have been confusing for someone. Because when's the last time you saw a in arena competition where you had to bounce the ball into the basket. The, it, these in arena competitions are silly. Sure. I would assume that all of them would, m Did you would watch be the case. The, oh, you weren't here in person. What? They had an all-timer of the ribs. Oh, the ribs? Yeah, the ribs won. Of Coached course up they by did. Coached up by T.A., first-team yep. all-ribs, first-team yep. yep. all-defense. Yep. Yeah. They, those poor guys didn't stand a chance. I was scared one of them was going to get hurt. I, I want to play the physical ribs. Those are the ribs I want to play. They I've were, been trying they to play, holding, I've been trying to play the, the ribs since like 2011, 2012. Someday. Someday I'll get to play them. Yeah. As Nick and Courtney said in the chat, give an example. A demonstration goes a long way. Be able to follow directions. Bounce the ball into the rim. You, yeah, and you only do have so much time. We've got a, a pretty good relationship with our in arena staff. Let's go ask them what they think about this after the show before we head out to Arkansas. <laughs> All right. This is what we were talking about when it comes to um, there was an – MMA fight in the Czech Republic, and I guess the Czech Republic does these kind of like stunt fights fairly um, often, but if we can put the video up of this particular uh, fight that was between somebody named um, Dobrenka Kotlarova and an influencer, Regina Lebajova. Uh, one is a judo champion and the other is an actor and influencer. And I mean, you can just tell where this is going to go, right? Like, it's just such, oh God, she knocked out herself. She Wait, knocked which, out herself. Which one is the influencer? Um, I believe. Because surely the one the who big, knocked herself no, the, out. No, the big one is the judo champion. Oh, that's terrible. And the other one what is a the actor look. influencer. Mike Tyson, I hope you're out there watching this. I hope you know you need to take this stuff serious. It'd be a damn shame for you to try and hit Jake with one of those and then accidentally hit yourself in the face. She checked on her fallen foe who was given water and a canned beverage of some sorts. They were all in good spirits afterwards. <laughs> how do you so knock, we can be in good how do you spirits. Fall and knock yourself out? I watched that video and I laughed out loud. You should. Okay, it first popped up. Play the video this is again. how this, this is how this Run goes the video down. again. It first pops up and I go, oh, CJ, come on. Why would you send this? And then it ended and I couldn't help but what do you have mean? a nice giggle. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen at the start of this? I didn't know where it was going, but Why I figured, you, oh, God, blood? not there. Not there. That's one of the most. <laughs> athletic moments from sports she's a we have judo ever champion. seen. She's a champion. Not champion moment. All right. That's a good question, Jacob. Who did she beat? We, we want answers. <laughs> we demand answers. We want answers. You let me know how that's going. Um, that'll do it. I got to figure out these eclipse glasses. I got to figure out if we're driving to Jonesboro. Wait, can we show the U.S. women's team giving up a goal? Oh, yeah, go for it. But they, they won, right? They won. Okay. They won. First 30 seconds, though, that right side looked real suspect. Japan gets the ball right here on the turnover. They got it. USA's in possession. They're dribbling it up. Turnover right here. Straight down the right side. Blow. Where are you guys? Where are y'all doing? Oh, no. Look at the time, Jessica. 26, oh, 27, no. 28. The first 30 seconds of the match, they give up a goal. Now, thank goodness, Team USA, the women, they found a way to, to win that game. Uh, Swanson is back playing really, really well. Played a lot of minutes. I don't know if she'll play in the She Believes Cup final, yeah. but she looks good. She looks to be ready to go for uh, Paris. Um, um, Haran scored on a uh, penalty kick to give the U.S. the, the go-ahead goal. But, like, yo, I can't remember allowing a goal in the that first fast. 30 seconds. <laughs> that In the first minute, this team has... Uh, they are void their their traditional stars. I hope they can find a way to to at least give me some type of medal in Paris. I'm I'm gonna be sick if they don't medal in Paris. I, I don't think I can handle it. Sick. The Olympics will be here before we know it. Uh, shockingly, the stories that get cut from Hot Mess <laughs> Express today, both baseball related, coming out of the weekend. I still have only watched two innings of Major League Baseball this 
season. Uh, as other Jacob pointed out to us, Major League Baseball is doing everything it can to make sure that fans can't watch the blackout situation, I guess, is abysmal. But here we have our official MLB innings counter. CJ has watched zero. I have watched two. It was a great Monday, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, truly wonderful times at FedEx Forum this weekend watching the uh, Marcus Al Jersey retirement. I know it'll be discussed all day long here on Grind City Media. The Gary Parrish Show is coming up next. I believe Kelsey Wright Johnson, special guest hosting that one today. And then the Chris Vernon Show at noon. We will be back tomorrow. I will stay up to watch UConn Purdue. Not because I'm happy about it, but because the NCAA and all the money in the world give us no choice but to watch late night sports. We'll be back tomorrow. It'll be a Grizzlies game day. Everybody have a wonderful day. I hope you go see the eclipse. Don't burn your retinas. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. In the history of like sports injuries that take away a potential star away a little too soon, where's Strasburg in that? I thought you were going to ask, what if one of the athletes burns their retinas? Where would we put that? <laughs> be up there. Where's Strasburg? I don't know. Hi? Braves fans are sick. Sick.